Okay, uh, welcome to this uh, second part of the session. Um, in here we're going to start creating some UVs. So we want to avoid that we uh, create procedural geometry without any UVs because then it has no much use. So how can we create our procedural UVs? So let's start with the following, something that you can ask yourself. If you have something like a wooden trunk, what would be the best way uh, to place your UVs? Um, is it right after once you have like this straight uh, tube or is it right after the deformation? The answer to that is that you have to do that before the deformation because what we want to have is that we have like uh, the bark following the cylinder and then once it gets deformed that the bark is also following the trunk as it is being formed. So this is something we're going to do. Now how can we create our UVs? There are several ways. Now if you look over here to the material node you find over here uh, several tools to create your UVs. You have a UV brush and a UV edit. These are like more destructive kind of approaches in which you can just start moving along or uh, changing a few point sets. UV fuse allows you to uh, again combine uh, certain elements etc. But these are the most important ones. You have like UV project, UV quick shade which is rapidly going to give you like a preset and you have UV texture. UV project and UV texture they have both a few similar functions but the difference between them is that UV texture can also be used in combination with NURB surfaces in which it's going to use the parametric U and V of the NURB surface to uh, set the UVs. We have over here also a UV unwrap. With this tool you can also do some box mapping and things like that. You have like the possibility to change it into s several sets of patterns. And then as a last but very important tool um, you have over here the UV transform in which you can manipulate sets of UVs using groups etc. So the things that we're going to focus on right now is mainly the UV project and later on we're going to use the UV transform as well. So UV project we can add it in between and we see right here we have like this whole sets of uh, of elements and we don't see anything and the moment you press enter you see right here what's going on what's happening you see the symbol or the manipulator of the UV now you can see right over here uh, you can apply it to a group as always um, and I'm gonna talk about this right in a second but then we have right over here the prediction uh, type that you can choose so if you go down here, you will find the one which is most fitting to uh, what you need. And that would be a cylindrical, of course. So once you do cylindrical, we see over here how it sets itself to a nice cylinder. Now, there is a few buttons that we see over here. We have right over here, like all the transformations that you can do, and you and the V ranges and the angles. And we have over here an initialize tab. Now the initialize tab allows you to set by default um, the proper dimensions uh, using the type of prediction you have. So it's going to figure out where it's like long or small and then it's going to orient the shape into the right direction and then it's also going to uh, make sure that it's being stretched to the right dimensions. So. What I want you to figure out is a way how to do all of this processing automatically and take into account that we need to be able to do the following as well, that you can also displace the shape you have and that at all times it's going to try to automatically set the projection in a proper way. So how to do this? You can use two sets of expressions. There's one expression which is called centroid and there's one expression which you have seen already several times which is bounding box. Centroid allows you to return the center of an object. So what we're going to do is we're going to get the centroid over here. Centroid 
and we're not going to get because I was already trying to type immediately towards the tube but that's not the method that we're going to use and the reason for that is if I'm going to apply some transformations in between or if I'm going to add something else then this is not going to work there are two methods how you can solve this you could refer to like I've said before to a null or you can use the expression which is going to allow you to get the path of the incoming node that expression was op input path we're going to refer it to the node itself and then we take the first input okay so this is the first element now for the centroid we need to find the type and the centroid only has like three types so that's easy this is for x and we're gonna continue with that for the y value and also for the z value and so as you can see it's now nicely fitting the incoming object so if we're going to place it somewhere else as we can see it's always nicely following the whole thing so I'm going to set this already to zero this is working now the next one is for the scaling so right over here what we're gonna do is the following we're going to apply in here uh, the bounding box expression which we're going to do exactly the same so op input path referring to itself and the first input and then we're gonna have like the type so in this case we're going to measure the size the x size we want to have like the whole size of the object in order to have the right scaling so we do it like this and again we're going to continue applying that for each one x size z size all right so let's have a look and see whether our UVs are working correctly so first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to go to our material palette and in our material palette we're going to create a UV map which is then going to be applied in a shop network so right on the bottom over here we're going to now add a material node and with this material node we can set the material that we have stored in the shop network in the shop network here it is so UV map you apply it and from this moment on we should start to see the material but I'm not seeing anything and there is a strange reason to that suddenly we see like everything in wireframe and it's not displaying the geometry so what's going on let's have a look we have set it to points cylindrical everything over here should be all right now and we are not seeing a decent material let's have a look at the render view and in the render view it is showing up so it is working but somehow there's something wrong with the display view so the thing which you can do is go to your preferences general user interface let's have a look over here 3d viewports it's a 2 within 11 let's try over here gl 3.2 apply and so now we see a result if I move back then we see it again so that was a small glitch that you can solve that way okay as you should know uh, Houdini 11 is, is uh, not supported anymore or not really supported anymore so make sure to uh, try and do everything as much as possible as you can in uh, GL 3.2 now what we see over here we have done our cylindrical mapping but we see over here this strange artifact 
Now let me explain you what's happening. Um, and for that I'm going to uh, reduce the size or the, the dimensions of the tube this moment. So we're going to reduce the number of rows so that we have only two rows, very simple shape and we're going to reduce the number of columns so we have something like seven of them. So this is like a very easy representation but we still see clearly the effect what's going on over here. Now if you press spacebar 5 we see over here the UV representation. So what I'm going to show you right now are over here the numbers of the primitives. So if we have a look over here we see the first and the second one which are the top and the bottom of the cylinder and then we see starting from 2 and suddenly we see 3 right in the middle over here 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So what's going on over here with this 3? Well that's the following. Let me show you what the problem is over here and I'll try to do that by selecting uh, a group. So I'm going to add a small group over here, group geometry, and I'm going to select now number 3. Um, so this is what we're seeing over here. We see like this number 3 is, has been completely stretched. Now why is that? We have done over here a UV projection and this UV projection is a uh, cylinder which goes around around a fully enclosed shape and the cylinder is a fully enclosed shape. So let's see what's going to happen if we start to rotate over here around the y-axis. So the moment I start to rotate you see the three jumps and then we get like the four in the image and then the five and each time we see that there's always one primitive which is sitting right in that center. So let me explain you what's going on over here. We see right here the point numbers as well. We see like a whole set of point numbers. We have of course like uh, lots of double point numbers. The reason is because the tube is not a connected shape. So let me first add a fuse and this will probably clear a few things up. Okay, so here we see like the point numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on. Let me just set the rotation also back to 0 or uh, I have to rotate it in a different kind of direction. will make it a little bit easier to explain once it's being set this way. So Okay, so this is the first primitive as we can see over here, primitive 2 and so like I said 0, 1 or top and bottom. Primitive 2 is the first one from the side. This primitive has point 0 and point 1 on the top. We're going to ignore the points at the bottom for now. It's point 0 and point 1 on the top. And that's correct. So we're going to connect uh, from here to the other one. Let me add over here also a another view which is going to help explain the whole thing. And also over here I'm going to show the point numbers and we're going to show also the primitive numbers like this. Okay, so what we see over here, primitive 2 has 0, 1 as top points. Primitive 3 has 1, 2. And you see them over here, they're nicely being placed over here at the uh, in the UV coordinates. And this goes on. So for the next primitive, and for next primitive, next primitive, next primitive, it goes on, goes on, goes on. And then we come over here at primitive number 8. And primitive number 8, if we look over here at the points which are connecting this, is we have 6 and 0 and both of them have already been placed or are being placed over here with the UV project and 0 is sitting over here 6 is sitting over here so what's going on is this primitive is being completely stretched right over here so how can we solve this and uh, we can solve this by using a different 
type of points and those different types of points are called, called vertices. Vertices are unique to the primitive itself. So if you're going to look over here at the Houdini help file, um, they've added a nice new graphic which is clearly demonstrating what that is about. So if we talk about um, primitive point vertices We can probably find it over here in geometry attributes. I think we can see it right over here. And this is important to know. So what we've done right now is we used our UVs using the points over here. We see over here the primitives, so the, those are the polygons, the things in yellow. And the points over here are colored blue. And these are used to set the actual world position uh, of those points and how to make like faces connected to them. Now what we have over here is we have vertices and vertices are like sub-elements of the primitives and they help to determine the winding order. So what we see over here is 0, 1, 2, 0. So we have like a counterclockwise winding over here. We have also counterclockwise winding over here. It depends on what kind of software you have but they use the direction of the winding also to set the direction of the normal. So this is something which can be used in very specific cases. Now you can also see the numbering that they've added over here. The numbering is always, you, uh, is always a new count for each primitive. So they're counting in each primitive we have like a vertex 0, 1, 2, 3, 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. So you can see at one point you can have two vertices and because of that, because you can have like two vertices on one point, you're then allowed or you can then split in the UVs the positions of those vertices. So if we're going to go over here to group type and we're going to change these two vertices, we see immediately that now number 8 has jumped from one side to another. So if you're going to look right over here and we're going to see and look what the textures are going to look like and again we're not seeing anything over here I'll need to go back to this viewport and I'll need to play around again with those preferences I'm afraid so apply, oh no it was probably not necessary and I get a crash. Luckily save the whole thing. Let me just restart quickly. So as you should know, once you have such a crash, crash you can get quickly your Steam back. You just open, you go to your temp file and last modify temp file and you will find it right over here. The last scene that you had. So as you can see it's kind of difficult buggy to handle. So if we see it right now over here with the GL 3.2 we see that that problem has been solved. So again we see over here nicely all the polygons and we see them right over here everything is nicely set. So now we can set again our rows to a decent value and our subdivisions to a decent value something like this. So this is for the top view, uh, this is for the cylindrical uh, mapping. Now I have a challenge for you, um, like you probably have seen in class or if you weren't there um, this is going to be your challenge. So what I want you to do is the following. I want you to create UVs, two separate UVs. I want you to create like UVs for the top and the bottom with a top-down projection and I want to have like cylindrical projection only on the side. So we have like two types of uh, mappings from top bottom and from the side. Now what is important is that um, you're not going to branch into several sections. I don't want you to do the following. Make a branch with the UV project in one side and make another branch with the UV project into another side and then bring them back together. You can do everything at once 
in just one direct line in one session. What you will need is you will need of course two UV projects and you will need to use grouping. So this is something you need to figure out. Okay, if you have solved or if you didn't solve uh, the problem, I'm going to show you what you needed to do. First of all, we needed to create the proper groups. If you're going to have a look over here at the primitives, we see on the top we have primitive 0 and at the bottom we have primitive 1. This is working in all cases, no matter how many primitives you have over here. So actually that grouping is very, very easy for the top bottom. You can do this by adding over here just 0, 1 and they're always selected at all times as you can see over here. So let's see. Yeah. As you can see it's disappearing. I don't know why that is happening the moment I start turning around. But anyways you probably have seen uh, the whole issue over here. So that w that's that's one way. Now this was easy because we know the construction of this whole thing. Now there are other methods as well what you can do. One of the other methods is using two groups for example and selecting by normal. So one could say okay I'm going to select over here by normal. Let's take the positive y and we're going to reduce over here the angle and so if you're going to look down then the bottom part is being selected so again we have that same issue in which you're not seeing the selection as you can see it right now on the top so this is done by using a direction now also this is not really ideal because we need to have like both top and bottom. Uh, let me change the views back uh, to the old OpenGL because it's a little bit annoying that it's not working properly. But yeah, this is software development. Okay, back to Houdini 11, accept, and now we clearly see what's going on over here. Alright, um, so we're gonna use a different kind of method. Suppose we have like over here in the sort, uh, we have like with primitive everything randomized. As you can see using normals it's going to still select this but suppose you have like a more complex shape with um, polygons turned into all kinds of directions and we need to make sure that is that you're able to select the right ones. So what else can you do? You can select using an expression. Now how does an expression selection work? Well an expression selection ex uh, expects from you that you're going to add, um, by the way, oh, it's still standing in the center. An expression selection is going to expect you that you're going to return for each primitive whether it has to be selected or not. And how does it work? It's working with a true or false. So now all the primitives uh, are set to one. So they're all true, they're all selected. If we set it to zero, none of them are true, none of them are getting selected. So what can you do? You can use for example a dollar t y. So we're going to measure the positions in the height and so when the t y, when it is bigger or equal than zero, then it is true. So for all primitives it's going to measure the position in the y direction. Is it bigger or equal to zero? then it says 1, if not it says 0. So as you can see you can quickly make selections that way and so um, if we're going to move for example the whole object up and down, let's say we move it a little bit down, you're seeing that this selection is updating automatically that way. So this is a good way to make like a procedural selection system as well. And so suppose if we're going to have over here uh, dollar frame um, 
let's multiply this uh, let's say with 90 and we're gonna use that as a sine value and then we're gonna see over here in our selection if we start to play around oops this is moving a little bit too fast uh, that our selection is updating depending on the position so you have like a procedural way to make selections that way so let me just quickly delete this whole thing so what kind of expression do we need over here now the thing is right over here there are like lots of uh, variables that you can use we have this huge huge list you, you're not going to find immediately what you what you want but uh, I'll tell you the thing what we're going to do is we're going to count the amount of vertices that each polygon has as you know it, uh, vertex sets are unique to each polygon and so if we see this difference between the ones on the side and ones on the top of the bottom is that the ones on the side they have always four vertices and the ones on the top and on the bottom they have much more vertices so we can do that by selecting dollar v and then you immediately see right over here v t x so this is counting the number or this is setting the uh, vertex number so what we're going to do is we're going to count the number of vertices number vtx so that's the total number number of vertices so if the number of vertices is bigger than four then we're going to select it and so that way you can see we have selected top and bottom so this is also a very very powerful method because that way you can make like all your own selection criteria okay so let's have a look over here and I'm going to include the source for now uh, just to make it uh, to give it a good reason to select the other ones oh no let me just show you quickly what else you can do so let me just add a second group over here and with this group geometry what we can do is the following so we're having again the normal ordered uh, primitives uh, right over here so what you can do is uh, the following you can select for example by group eh? so the, the thing is right over here we want to make sure that we had like the first and the second selection that was easy now we need to get the rest well there are various ways how we can do that we can we can start by point two or by primitive two and then select all the rest so you can do that by writing again a small expression and remember over here we're sitting in patterns so if you want to activate an expression you need to really make sure that we uh, set that between backticks so dollar n is giving us the variable of the total number of primitives or the total number of points depending on what we're uh, in what kind of entity we are um, that's going to return that value so 2 uh, until the total number of primitives so this is one method how you can do that and as you can see right here you see like the full selection of all the rest now there's something else you can use as well you can also use grouping by range now grouping by range works more or less the same way so what we've done over here the 2 till a dollar n is the same thing what we see over here the start and end it starts from 0 and goes to the total number and from that we're going to select one primitive out of two so it's going to follow the whole thing and it's going to select one out of two so this is the first one this one is selected and if you go and look at the bottom the second one is not selected and then it's continuing like that all the way through so the second one is being selected third one not fourth one selected fifth one not and so on so if we're going to select one out of four we see exactly that pattern appearing again up so one out of four and so you can create like all kinds of patterns so this is really good if you want to have for example like extrusions on tubes you can create like all these special kind of patterns which you could use later on if you want to have let's say 
um, methods to create like uh, insets for tubes like those typical plastic tubes this is a very good way how to solve something like that and also to make it like in a variable way very fun to play with now there's also another method which is very powerful and uh, which you don't see over here and that is that you can do everything also within just one group so let me just name this group we call this one top bottom um, we have over here the group name I'm going to replace that I'm going to do this manually because what I'm going to say is it's not going to be only top bottom but it's also going to be the sides at the same time now how can we create oops how can we create the sides automatically from what we have right over here well you can do the following uh, by the way I'm going to use this connection over here doesn't matter can happen with anyone uh, any one of those groups as long as you have like the right top bottom um, the thing what we can do we can within this we can create within this node also a new group and that is using over here with the combination tab here we have the creation tab in which we're going to create like a new selection in the combination tab you can create a new selection from using a combination of other ones so this ones we're going to call the sites and so what can we do we set a new group from sites and what I'm going to say is the sites are not going to be the top bottom and so therefore it's going to select everything except the top and the bottom and so you can create like more and more of those things so if you have like other groups on top of that you can make like combinations you can say for example I want to have like a union or or and so let's say if I have like a new group and let me add indeed by range something like this we see we have like the top selected over here and we have like the side selected over here so we have right now the sides the top is not selected anymore so we can combine it for example with uh, using a, uh, a subtraction and we're going to subtract from that group 2 so now we had a very easy method to select like all the sites within uh, with a certain kind of pattern and the top bottom that we didn't want to have we have also excluded them over here so you can vary and play around with those things however you like okay so this was a, just as an example so this is how we created our groups as we can see right over here two primitive groups in top bottom and so many primitives in sides so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create keep this one we're gonna keep this for sides and let's see at the end result with the material as you can see right over here and so what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna make sure that we're only going to have like UV projection on the sides so right here go to sites select that and we see that the top doesn't have like any primitives at all so this is very good now we need to create like a top bottom projection so what we do is we copy and paste this very simple we remove the sides and we connect the top bottom so now we see the top bottom again we're gonna change this to orthographic and we see over here the direction I'm going to change over here the rotation we're gonna set it just by default as what it is and we're going to rotate this whole thing we're gonna make sure that it's going to project top bottom down so I'm going to rotate it, it by 90 degrees or perhaps mi minus 90 degrees so that the top one has uh, everything in the right direction now the bottom one will still be mirrored so if you want to solve something like this it's probably best that you create for the top and the bottom one separate groups so that you can have like different kind of vertices but now in the case of a lock that probably doesn't matter that much now we see our dimensions are not correct 
and how can we solve this by not changing anything over here in our expressions? Well, we can change this by changing what we have over here, the transformation order. Because what's happening now is it's first going to scale. So it's doing this by the default orientation. So it's first scaling the whole shape to what we see over here. Then it is rotating and then it is translating to follow the whole thing. So what we're going to do is we have to make sure that the scaling and the rotation are going to be switched around. So rotate scale and then translation and then it's fixed. So first it's going to rotate the whole shape, then it's going to scale in order to fit the whole thing and then it's going to translate that all. So now we have our UVs um, and this concludes it uh, for our um, second session. Now in the next session what we're going to do is we're going to create like some booleans and we're going to make sure that we're going to cut our uh, trunk or our uh, lock into the right dimensions for having planks.